A fierce wind was sweeping across the island of Sodor. Thomas, Percy, and Toby listened anxiously as it blew outside the shed. When their drivers came next morning, none of them wanted to go. It's much nicer in here, said Percy, and warmer too, added Toby. Come on, all of you, said their drivers. What would Sir Topham Hatt do without us? The wind was cold and very strong, and Annie and Clarabelle didn't like it either. There's normally more passengers on the platform, said Clarabelle. They must be indoors, said Annie, away from the storm. I don't blame them, said Thomas. Whew. As Thomas approached the station by the river, he was astonished to see soccer players playing in a field. Some were wearing red shirts, while others were wearing blue and white. Trees along the line were waving wildly in the wind. Sooner them than me, thought Thomas. They'll be knocked down if they're not careful. On the way back, Thomas stopped at the station by the river again for a drink. The firemen had trouble putting the hose in Thomas's tank because the wind kept trying to blow it away. They were ready at last. Oh, come along, let's go. Oh, come along, let's go, he puffed to Annie and Clarabelle. We're coming along, we're coming along, they replied. By the time they reached the curve by the playing field again, they were going well. The soccer players were still playing, and Thomas was amazed. They were halfway around the curve when suddenly Clarabelle's brakes came on. Oh, what's the matter now? He could soon see a tree was lying astride the line. Goodness gracious me, said Thomas. I didn't see that. But how did the conductor know about it? The driver looked back. Running towards them were three of the soccer players followed by the conductor. Thank goodness you've stopped, said a player. We thought we were too late. It was a near thing too, said the driver. Thank you for warning us. The driver backed the train to the station where Bertie was waiting to take the passengers. The station master came to see Thomas. Terence will come to move the tree, he said, but he won't be able to do so until tomorrow morning. But that means we'll be stuck here all night, cried Thomas. I'm afraid so. Thomas, Annie, and Clarabelle had to spend a cold, miserable night in a siding by the station. The next day, Terence the tractor came to move the tree off the line. And then the workmen cut it up into smaller pieces. Percy and Toby worked hard all day, moving the wood. Thomas was very glad to move out of the siding, and so were Annie and Clarabelle. A week later, Sir Topham Hatt hosted a party at the station by the river, and he gave the soccer players a framed certificate. This is to thank you for saving one of my engines from a nasty accident. It's good people like you that help keep this railway safe. Everyone cheered. And Thomas was very pleased, especially now that the hurricane was over.